We're here with MSU football beat writer Ty Hutchison, and uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about last week's game against Wayne State. Uh, Ty, how big of a win was it for MSU? It was a, it was a big win. Uh, a lot of people coming into the week, and I think we're kind of looking past it at the Augustana game this Thursday, but Wayne was definitely a good team. Uh, they had a better record than Augie heading into the week. Um, their style at least looked like it, it would be the kind that MSU has struggled with in their first two losses this season, um, and so it, it was just a huge win for them. The Mavericks got off to a quick start, uh, had a few big plays in the passing game. Uh, uh, you want to talk about how they kicked off that first half? Yeah, um, you know, we talked to John Daniels afterwards, and you can check out the press conference if you want to on the reporter's YouTube page. But he said, you know, the past couple games leading up to this, they had been kind of frustrated just with their lack of, you know, just these huge explosive plays, even though they have the guys to do it. Um, and they start off against Wayne State. It doesn't even take them, you know, they score two plays into the game. Uh, Adam Thielen just opens up for a 45-yard touchdown. And then the next drive, it only takes them five, and they hit Dennis Carter for a 33-yarder. So they really right away just exposed the secondary for what it was, and they really just opened it up and played the kind of game they wanted to play. Wayne State moved the ball against the Mavericks pretty well that whole first half, but it seemed like every time they got in the red zone, things just fell apart. Uh, how big did MSU's defense come up, uh, especially in the first half there? It was huge, um, especially, you know, in the first quarter, Wayne came out in kind of a no-huddle offense. It kind of threw him off a little bit. But after that, you know, especially once the uh, horn sounded and they entered the second quarter, MSU's defense was just shut down, especially once they got into the red zone. They had, you know, Andre Legrome started off with a huge um, interception at, like, the two-yard line, and then Jordan Hale finished off the half with his feet right on the zero um, and took it back to about midfield. So they were just lights out, and as good as Wayne's offensive stats look for the game, they just... They couldn't get it going when they needed to, and MSU's defense did a good job of getting the stops when they needed to. Andy Pfeiffer, uh, after uh, St. Cloud shut him down a few weeks ago, he's been got he's got back on track now. Rushed for over a hundred yards again and got a touchdown. Uh, what's he been doing so well this year? He just runs really hard, to be honest with you. Even at the beginning of the game, you know they ran him a few times right at some of the pressure, and he just you know, we'd run right through it and maybe only pick up, you know, three or four yards or whatever, but he, he just runs so hard that eventually, you know, the holes open up and you can't not give it to him because he's, he's such a great, you know, great balancer to the, you know, down the field threats that they have. He's, he really adds a lot to the team and when he, when they give him the ball, you know, whether he has it or not, he finds a way to make it. Big matchup coming up in a couple of days here on Thursday, uh, nationally televised against Augustana, you want to give us a little breakdown? Well, i got to look at them a little bit more stat-wise, but um, coming into the air, Augustana was thought to be you know, one of the better teams in the NSIC. Um, and MSU has, I don't want to say came out of nowhere because they were you know, maybe fourth or fifth, but they really stepped up. Um, and Augie struggled a little bit to start the season, so it'll, just, it'll be a good matchup. They've really come on strong as of late, so it'll be probably you know, behind... Minnesota Duluth and St. Cloud it'll kind of be the other two teams battling for who the you know kind of third contender will be um, and it's it's going to be a great game. Finally looking forward uh, do you think this Mavericks team uh, has what it takes to get into deep into the playoffs and maybe uh, knock off Duluth maybe in a couple of weeks? They definitely have the talent um, it's you know it's hard to hard to bet against Duluth just with their history and they run a great team, but Coach Hoffner's done a great job with them this year. Their, you know, offensive and defensive coaches are, are all doing just a great job, and they have a ton of individual talent. Um, it's been really interesting throughout the year just to watch kind of how everyone meshes and how they all kind of find their place. Um, but now that they have, you know, they're playing some good football, and they don't have too many weaknesses, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. I think they definitely have the talent to do it. All right, thanks, Tag, and we'll be looking forward to the big game on Thursday. No problem.